There is a reason why I work on average 25 hour weeks. That's because over the past 10 years of me being a solo tutor starting out, quitting my job as a pharmacist, starting my private tutoring company called Lisa Study Guides, hiring 35 tutors plus, having over 200 students, having our study guides used in schools across the world, I've been tested time and time again and I have pushed myself to burn out. It's at the point now where from experience, I know exactly my limit on the number of hours I should be working each week. I know when I'm starting to fizzle out and there's no point Point anymore in me pushing through for the rest of the day because my head is done. I also know how to recognize some of the early signs of burnout and now because I've been burned out so many times I now have kind of developed a strategy for myself on overcoming burnout and giving myself the space I need to really go back to my optimum potential. So today I'm going to share with you three solutions to burnout. Awareness, systems and your manual work. We're going to talk about how important awareness is, the roles your systems have in your business to free up your time so you're not just dragging yourself through the mud working. And three, we're going to talk about the manual work. So the work that you can't delegate to others, the work that you cannot systemize, the work that you really need to input yourself, for example, me filming this YouTube video, how you can protect your energy and avoid burnout there. So firstly, what is burnout? Burnout is a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. It occurs when you feel overwhelmed, emotionally drained, and unable to meet constant demands. Now that we're on the same page of what burnout is, let's talk about some of the solutions to burnout. Awareness is actually the trickiest one because to be self-aware, to recognize when you are starting to no longer get productive, when you are starting to get a bit of brain fog, you know, a bit of cloudiness, or your thinking is starting to take a little bit longer for you to resolve problems, that is something that can be really hard to see from an outside perspective because you're just in there, you're in the work itself. So what I would recommend for someone who doesn't feel like they're quite aware of their own product Activity and their mental headspace is I would record a diary of one week where for every hour you work, say Monday to Friday, you record at each hour how you're actually feeling. The two questions you want to ask yourself are how am I feeling? Is it starting to feel fatigued, tired, a bit slow? Or are you feeling super energetic, excited? And also write down what type of work you're doing. The type of work is actually quite important because when it's work that is rewarding, it's fulfilling, it's gonna be quite invigorating and it's gonna get you going. Whereas if it's a type of work that actually drains you, then you're probably gonna start feeling quite tired. And by having a record or a diary of this, at the end of the day, you don't have as much energy and as much willpower as you do at the start of the day. So it's gonna help you understand your own work schedule and what time you should assign for what part of the day in order to be optimally aligned with your energy levels. Once you've recorded a week's worth of your work, you also want to reflect back and look at which hours of the day do you seem to work best. So for example, when I started hiring tutors and growing out Lisa's study guides, around when I was 25, 26, I used to be very much a late hour and that's the time when I was most productive and I did my best work. But actually, as I've gotten older, things have changed. I seem to do my best work in the mornings now from eight o'clock through to 11 o'clock. The other tip I have here is just because you do a diary of one week doesn't mean you should hold it as the holy grail. Just know that your body naturally evolves over time as well. And so something that's working for you now may not work for you in the future and that's okay. But you just go back to reassessing and then reflecting and making a new plan of action. The third thing I find particularly helpful for me when I'm assessing whether or not I'm starting to burn out or if I'm burnt out is starting to notice any changes in my behavior. So for example, when I am stressed and when I'm doing a lot of work, I actually tend to stress eat. I love desserts, but I'm usually quite good at controlling my dessert portions. However, I know that when I start to break out of that mold and I start to have a few more pieces of chocolate or maybe I'm treating myself to a bubble tea or boba because I feel like I've been dealing with a lot and so I won't just get 
get one for this week, but I'll get like two or three or even four. That is a really good sign that things in my headspace are not going well. I don't have the willpower left over to actually control my diet. In fact, that work stress is starting to spill out into other areas of my life and impact my quality of life elsewhere. Another sign is that I also stop exercising. So after my diet, exercise is the second thing that goes. Why? Because, well, going to the gym takes a lot of willpower for me. You know, I have to get into the mood. I have to go. I have to lift weights. And it's really mentally draining. Like you gotta really be present when you are at the gym. And so when my head is filled with lots of work, I am stressed, I am drained, I am fatigued. I can't seem to finish up the mountain of work and I cannot see no end. Then of course, gym is gonna be one of the first thing that disappears off my list because one, I don't have the energy for it, but also two, I'm probably giving that up so that I can sit down and do more work, which is really counterintuitive because we all know how important exercise is for us to live healthy, be happy, and therefore create our best work. So now that you've got a few tools to help you be more aware of when you're on the brink of burnout, the next thing we wanna talk about is systemization. One of the reasons you're probably burnt out is because you've got so much work you need to do. But my question is, rather than just treating the burnout, why don't we actually treat the cause, which is the amount of work that you're doing? If we look at the amount of work that you're doing, how can we possibly reduce that amount so that you don't run into this future problem of getting burnt out again? That's where systems come in. So when I talk about systems, I'm talking about anything you do in your work that is often repeated. So I recently did this TikTok video about one of my clients. He was actually the main contact source for his tutors and his students. And so they would all send him messages and then he would send messages out confirming sessions with both students and tutors. If anyone needed to reschedule or cancel, they would go to him and he would send out more messages. So he was manually doing all of this. And instead what we did was, hang on a minute, you're doing this for half an hour every single day. This is the thing that is repeatable. You're doing it every day in your business. Let's turn it into a system. So we did that via automation. I got him to pay something ridiculous like $10 for a software for each month. And now all of that is automated for him. So no longer is his mountain of work this big, he's now saved four hours each week to go and do something else in his business that he enjoys more. So it goes back to that, what kind of work are you doing? Or he can do it for something else in his life that makes him happy. The second part of systems is, could you potentially leverage people? So an, a really good example in my own business is my YouTube videos. Something that needs to be done every single time I publish a YouTube video is to edit the YouTube videos. But to edit a YouTube video would take me a decent five hours to do so each time. And to be honest, it's not my most satisfying work. Remember that question I asked you before, what type of work is it? It's not the thing that brings me joy. I love sharing content and I love filming. Editing is just not it for me because that is something that is repeated in the process every single time. I'm not gonna release any video without editing it. I can systemize this whole process by delegating the editing work to somebody else and then forming a process around it. So for example, so the process for YouTube filming for me actually looks a little bit like this. I'll put it on screen here. So we use Asana and it's basically a checklist of all the things that need to be done for a YouTube video. And because a lot of these tasks are very similar and repeated each each time, I've actually recorded them down and this actually streamlines everything. Everybody who's involved in the project is on the same page and so we can just go through it one by one, checklist after checklist and things run quite smoothly. Now, we've talked about how you can systemize some of your work. So we're gonna reduce that workload and get to the source of the problem. But unfortunately, we can't get rid of all of the work that we've got. Some things we just absolutely need to do. So for example, maybe you're a solo tutor and you can't really offboard that to anybody right now. So you're the person who has to be there. If you're the person who needs to be there in your tutoring session, we wanna think about how can you make this time more valuable for you. That way it makes it even more worth it. And when you make it more worth it, it makes it more fulfilling, more rewarding, and it kind of shifts that perspective of the work being something that's draining, fatiguing, to something that's a bit more exciting for you. And we want your work to be exciting for you because I don't want to just work for the sake of working. I want to feel like I'm doing a good job. I want to feel like I'm making an impact. I want to feel good at what I'm doing. Here are some of the things you can think about in order to make that time more worthwhile for you. One, 
can you potentially increase your prices? Two, could you change your service that you're offering? So instead of one-on-one, -on -one, could it be a small group? And that's actually how you increase your revenue for that hour. And the third one is non-monetary. But what are some ways you can change up that work so it does feel more fulfilling for you? So for example, I know for me when I was a tutor, I really loved spending five, 10 minutes every single session actually just chatting to my students and getting to know them. I felt like it was really easy work and I knew that building rapport with them was just as important as actually teaching them because if I could build that connection with them, they would feel more open with me, they would be more willing to ask questions and really share with me what was going on in their head. I saw that as a win-win for everybody. At the end of the day, you really have to think about how you can protect your energy and the one biggest tip I have for you is to also recognize that what works for you may not work for somebody else. And so just because there's somebody else out there that's grinding 50 hour, 60 hour, 100 hour weeks, and that to you is just a nightmare, then you don't have to feel like you need to do that. It's taken me a really long time to understand my own energy levels. My work requires to me to be highly present because either I'm filming to a camera and that requires quite high energy from me, or I'm on a Zoom call with a client and I need to be truly listening to them and be 110% there. Otherwise, I'm gonna miss what they say. So I hope this video gives you some really practical tactics on how you can avoid burnout in the future. I'm gonna plug myself here a little bit and say that one of the things I'm really good at is systemization of your business. And that's how I've been able to build my business to the upper multiple six figure stage, but only work 25 hour weeks. I've had so many clients who come to me who feel overwhelmed, who feel like they're doing a lot of work, but they're not really pushing the dial and they just wanna get smarter about how they're actually operating. Then if that sounds like you, I am probably the coach for you. I'll leave a few resources in the description box below for you to find out more about me, what I do and how I can help you. And if you wanted to just have a chat, then feel free to DM me. I appreciate you so much if you've reached all the way to the end of this video. Just a secret between you and me because you've gotten to the end of this video, please write in the comment section below, no more burnout, just so that I know you found this video so helpful that you've watched all the way until the very end. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye.